The latest iPad Pro now comes with that impressive M1 chip, which might be a beast, but when you're just running to what amounts to big iOS apps, why not take a look at last year's 2020 iPad Pro? And if you're wondering how it holds up after 12 months of use or an abuse during lockdown, well, I've had mine for around about 12 months at this point, so let's take a look. Before we dive in fully though, how about subscribing if you want to see more videos just like this. It genuinely does help the channel reach more people and you get some nice content on top of that too. So remember to subscribe today for more long-term looks at hardware just like the iPad Pro. I also have an official Discord channel if you just want to kick back, chat tech, smartphones, you name it, we're talking about it. Come along, we're still growing and you might even get some snippets and info about my upcoming projects. I think if you're in the market for a tablet, it's still really tough to look elsewhere than the iPad. For me, I found it hard to even justify owning a tablet at any point in time. I have a laptop already. I have plenty of large smartphones, but the iPad Pro 2020 edition was actually the first tablet that I've bought since the Nexus 7, the original 2012 version. You could say it's a big leap, but I can't help but think I've not made the most of it just yet. It can do so much, but it's still running iPad OS. Apple might claim that the iPad can replace a PC or more specifically a laptop, but I still think it needs the, or the tablet form factor needs a little bit longer in the oven if that is going to be the case long term. Those complaints out of the way though, I really do love the iPad Pro 2020 edition. It's a constant companion to me that I think I can depend upon to last all day. And with some workarounds, it's almost perfect for most of you out there who probably don't need much and are maybe not going to be editing videos like I do on the move. If you have at any point had your eye on the 2018 iPad Pro, the 2020 edition is just a slight spec bump with an attached camera, wide angle camera that is. The, this makes the decision to pick one up a little bit difficult as the iPad Air, which is slightly cheaper, is also in the mix and it's cheaper than the iPad Pro, as I just mentioned. I'll talk a little bit more about the core internal differences in a moment, but I feel like this is an iPad Pro 2018 Plus to the vast majority of people out there. The design really isn't anything special, but the smooth edges and flat sides are fine, but the design isn't exactly what I would call inspired, but the fit and finish itself is up to Apple's usual ridiculously high standards. You can't really do a ton with a tablet in reality beyond the aspect ratio, so it's absolutely fine for probably what you're gonna be using it for. The new models do look the same, so you're not getting a refresh unless you want extra color options, in which case the iPad Air might be the one to take a closer look at if you do want some more colorful options. It does have a nice 120 Hertz LCD display that is tack sharp, and as with almost all Apple displays is tuned to perfection. My biggest issue though, is what I can only assume is a slight yellow or green tint when viewing certain pages or apps with dark mode enabled. I find the display seems to not quite look right in particular. The Notes app is one of those that exhibits a weird light bleed when using the Apple Pencil. This might be my fault in, or a fault in my iPad Pro, but it's something I have heard from other people too, and it seems to be an LCD related issue. On top of that as well, the bezels aren't exactly small, but at least they are uniform across all sides, even with a face ID scanner up top, that is. I'm interested to see if Apple tries to minimize the bezels over time, but you've got a nice area to grip a hold of and maneuver the iPad Pro in your hands. It doesn't necessarily matter where you grip it either, as I cannot fault the improved speakers one bit. There's four of them at either corner, and for such a thin piece of metal, this, this acute audio is genuinely exceptional. It helps elevate the experience and I just love playing games, listening to music and podcasts or just watching videos on this thing because the speakers are just so lovely and rich with plenty of bass and nuance. Not having a 3.5mm headphone port is a pain, but I can kind of deal with it now that most of my other smartphones and whatnot don't have one. But the it, it does sting given how Apple markets the iPad as a computer, which this sort of is by very definition. Just one USB-C port on a pro-grade tablet is also a bit annoying. A multi-port hub is usable, and I would consider it a must-have accessory if you're going to do anything more than just use this for note-taking and watching videos. Personally, and I'm pretty sure many other people out there will agree with me here, I think the 11-inch iPad Pro is the perfect additional piece of tech, while the 12.9-inch model feels too much like it's trying to be the main event. The smaller size makes this one ideal as a secondary or tertiary piece of tech, and that's where I found it fits best. There's the powerful application as a secondary display too for a MacBook or even a Mac with sidecar, something that I think is often overlooked, but it is a fantastic extra 
if you are already entrenched within Apple's hardware ecosystems. The size is important as well because the new M1 iPad Pros look like they might be a shift towards something more work focused. That's likely going to provide a big performance jump, especially in gaming and video editing. But to be honest, the A12Z with the unlocked graphics core is still way more powerful than I would ever need. And I'm sure that it's going to be more than most of you out there can possibly utilize on a day to day basis. If you're looking for a laptop replacement long term, the M1 iPad Pro probably is where you should be looking. But Apple still hasn't done anything with iPad OS that makes a massive difference. Uh, that does also mean that last year's devices, this 2020 and 2018 model, have come down in price quite substantially and they all look pretty much the same and you're still running what amounts to big iOS apps and the note taking element alongside media viewing is still plenty powerful enough for the vast majority of people out there I'd imagine. The 2020 11 inch iPad and the M1. So realistically the 2020 11 inch iPad and the M1 iPad 11 inch are practically identical save that core CPU. So that means the exact same across the board, including the screen itself. It's not a mini LED such as the 12.9 inch model comes with. And there is a proposed 50% CPU performance increase and 40% GPU performance increase. Plus, there's also some faster USB data transfer rates thrown in for good measure. That sounds great. But if you assess what you are doing daily, then I have a feeling that you might question what really makes a difference here. YouTube, Netflix and even LumaFusion video editing it's all still insanely good on the iPad Pro 2020 model. I do think that if you're a student that only wants a machine to take notes, watch videos, and needs something that will last all day on a single charge, I'd probably say go for the iPad Pro 2020. It's a beast. It can edit videos and photos with some of the better iPad OS versions of some of these lightweight desktop apps. I have to say as well that the cloud gaming services like Stadia and GeForce Now have changed the value proposition of all iPads as an actual gaming device. The iPad Pro 2020 has become my go-to screen for playing Stadia, but Apple Arcade has been uh, pretty good and there's a few decent titles that I like to play like What the Golf and they're a great time killer that make this much more than just a extra screen for Netflix. It helps that there are absolutely no issues with performance in gaming, general usage or even when trying to edit 4K UHD video in one of the few essential iPad apps which is LumaFusion. Unlike the 2018 iPad Pro, the 2020 edition also includes 6GB of RAM which I think is really important for longevity and it's one of those things that is going to help increase the lifespan of this device if you do want to pick one up. If you're not necessarily that versed in tech, having an extra 2GB of RAM or 4 versus 6 from the 2018 to the 2020 model is probably going to help with app management long term. iPadOS just runs like a dream but it's also inhibited as well by being a bridge between iOS and macOS, at least in my opinion. I don't think it's been fully realized yet, but the dual screen apps do help make the 2020 iPad feel a bit more like a productivity tool that you can use for everyday usage. I've mentioned that if I were a student, I think the iPad would be in many cases better than an actual laptop for most people because realistically you're only going to be using docs, your web browser, and then maybe watching YouTube. The note taking on an iPad Pro model as well is second to none as long as you pick up that most essential iPad Pro accessory, the Apple Pencil. Strangely, I find of that I kind of use it like I would use a mouse or a trackpad on a laptop or PC, using it to point, swipe, select and annotate. It's the best accessory beyond a case, which actually leads me to our video sponsor for today, ESR. ESR gear makes some high quality but affordable cases, screen protectors and accessories for all kinds of Apple devices, including the iPad and even the new iPad Pro devices. I must admit, I do adore the flip cover as it helps protect my tablet but even has a neat protective slot for the Apple Pencil plus the ability to prop up with the magnetic flip cover. That's not all though as I even have a paper feel screen protector that is much cheaper than some of the competition out there and gives a lovely notepad writing feeling when using the Apple Pencil. I think this elevates the writing experience from good to exceptional. It's a must if you, like me, take notes, draw or scribble on your iPad screen. I've test driven a number of ESR gear accessories over the past few months and I can honestly say that I'm proud for the brand to sponsor the channel and I think if you're in the market for any number of accessories then they should be one of your go-to options. So thank you for ESR gear for sponsoring the channel and you can find links to some of their most popular products down in the video description below. 
Back to the design again, and I do worry a little bit about the strength or durability of the iPad Pro series, but I haven't exactly babied my own tablet and it seems to be holding up just fine. I still think a case is a sensible add-on because you don't want it folding or bending in a bag, especially if it goes in a book bag with some heavy items, but you're probably already aware of that going in. Before wrapping up, I have to say one of my only other major criticisms of the iPad Pro 2020 edition is the lack of a taptic engine. I really would have liked that. That would have been nice for some vibration based feedback. And I think it would have really elevated it above other tablets on the market. I think as well, if you're looking for a laptop replacement, unless you only want document editing and mainly lightweight productivity focused apps, which many students out there only need, it's not ideal as a full laptop replacement just yet. As a hybrid step between, I think it's the best damn tablet out there. And even though a newer model might be available, you simply can't go wrong with the 2020 iPad Pro, especially the 11 inch version. I would say skip the LTE model and hook up the Wi-Fi version to your phone as it's arguably the easiest piece of tech to recommend. So there we have it, the iPad Pro 2020 edition in 2021, even though superseded by the M1 model, still well worth picking up if you don't need that proposed extra headroom. Thanks for watching though. Thanks for sticking around to the very end. And if you want to see more long-term looks at tech, you can always subscribe or leave a comment down below to see what you think of the iPad Pro 2020. But until next time, this is Damien saying thanks for watching and I'll speak to you later.